Thanks, everyone. Um, let me just say this is a real honor to get to be up here, um, knowing just all the people that have been up here. Um, I don't take this lightly. So, but um, if you would go ahead and take your seats. Um, the passage I'm going to be talking from tonight is uh, Exodus 3, 1 through 4, and it's Moses at the burning bush. And there's really one passage I want to focus on, but sometimes to, to pull from one passage, you, you need a little context. And so um, just to kind of extract the meaning. So uh, Exodus 3, 1 through 4, Moses has been uh, exiled from Egypt. He's in the wilderness. He's in Midian. He's uh, shepherding and he's been there for several years. So Exodus 3, 1 through 4. Now Moses was pastoring the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, yet the bush was not consumed. So Moses said, I must turn aside now and see this marvelous sight, why the bush is not burned up. And when the Lord saw, he turned aside to look. God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. God's about to tell Moses that he's going to lead Israel, who's in slavery in Egypt, out of Egypt. And if you go to the next chapter in Exodus 4, God gives Moses three signs that are for the people. And the three signs are you'll put your hand in your, your breast pocket, Moses, and it'll turn into a leprosy, and then you'll pull it back out, and then it'll, it'll turn back to normal. You'll throw your staff down, it'll turn into a snake, and you'll turn water into blood. And that'll be the sign. So the people know that I've sent you, Moses. But going back to Exodus 3, where we were, if you go down to Exodus 3, verse 10 through 12, this passage has meant a lot to me. Therefore, come now, and I will send you to Pharaoh so that you may bring my people, the sons of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, certainly I will be with you, and this shall be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God at this mountain. A few years ago, I was kind of navigating like uh, some of my next steps in career and all these different things. And I felt like God was pushing me to do a certain project. It was a creative project that I was working on, but I wasn't quite sure whether to work on it. Um, and just to give you some background, the story was basically about a high school in my hometown and it involved, the, the high school was called the Highland Scots. And uh, they had like bagpipes and they wore like, like red and, the red and black kilts and the whole thing for the pregame festivities. And so I'm asking the Lord, do I work on this thing? Is it really worth my time with no real prospects? And the next day I'm walking my dog across West Nash, in the West Nashville uh, neighborhood, the Nations, and out of nowhere, I hear a bagpipe. Haven't heard it before, haven't seen it since. And so I follow this bagpipe and I find the bagpipe. I find this guy standing in his front yard, dressed in a Scottish warrior uniform, playing the bagpipes. In the midst of that season, I also, God gave me three sermons in two days. I wasn't looking for these sermons. I, I just, he just, Holy Spirit led me to him. And all three of them said, serve the local house. And in the midst of that, I came across this scripture and what the Lord was showing me is that though those are signs, Joey, and though that there will be more signs of blessing and success and all those different things, but the greatest sign to you is the sign to Moses. Because before, when Moses is in this moment, this is the first thing that God says is the sign to Moses. What he doesn't say to Moses, if you know the story, is that the sign to you, Moses, he doesn't say is the parting of the Red Sea. What he doesn't say is that the sign to you, Moses, are the 10 plagues of Egypt, though those were all signs. He doesn't say the cloud by day or the fire by night. He says that the sign to you, Moses, is when you've done what I've asked you, when you've walked in obedience, the sign to you is that you get to worship me. And so as I was walking this out, 
every single day because not every day was good. Not every day was easy. And when Moses first went to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, this isn't gonna happen. And Moses wondered why he'd gone. But the sign to Moses was that once he'd walked this out, he'd get to worship his God. The sign to Moses was intimacy. Moses was a man that intimately knew the father. And, and just explaining how this is intimacy, Moses was even called a friend of God. God said, to, said of Moses that he spoke to him face to face, mouth to mouth, like a man does his friend. And even when Miriam and Aaron were complaining about Moses as a leader, and even Miriam was considered a, a prophetess, and she's saying, well, we hear, we hear God just as good as Moses. God intervenes and interjects and even rebukes Miriam and Aaron and says, I don't speak to Moses like prophets. I speak to Moses. I, I don't speak to Moses in riddles and dreams. Not that God does not use dreams. He absolutely does. But I don't speak to Moses in riddles and dreams. I speak to Moses face to face. And so what that showed me is that you can have a great prophetic gifting and not be walking in intimacy. God wants you to walk in intimacy with him. He wants you to hear his voice. He wants you, he wants to be close to you. And what's amazing is that when Moses does come back to this moment and he comes back to this mountain, he's trained himself to be a man that walks by faith and not by sight. And in fact, in the moment when he has led this people out and they're on and he's on the mountain, he's getting to worship God. And not only is he getting to worship God, he's getting strategy for the next season. He's getting the 10 commandments and what God wants to do throughout the generations. Meanwhile, the people who had trained themselves to be focused and on the sign of what they could see and not God's presence were down in the valley building a golden calf and calling it Yahweh because it was something they could see. And it was like in the moment of testing, they started to worship the thing they could see. How do we walk in this intimacy? When I look at the great men of the Bible, I see men, they do two things. They're on their face before the Lord and out of being on their face, on their face before the Lord, they're walking in obedience. Moses was called the most humble man on earth and he was a man that walked in obedience. And if you wanna walk in intimacy with the Lord, I would encourage you, even tonight, if you even haven't experienced a moment in his presence where he's spoken something to you, turn aside, take the time to turn aside like Moses did. And if he's spoken something to you and you've had an encounter with the Lord and you're wondering, God, where are you? Because I had that experience. And what I found is what the Lord was telling me is it's not that I've left you, Joey. It's that my manifest presence has gone ahead of you and you've stayed behind and I need you to go be obedient where I've asked you to be. And so whatever that thing is, whatever he's asked you to be obedient in, just go meet him there. His presence is waiting. Thank you.